when it comes to prior to this accident happening. I think there was a lack of anticipating what the worst case scenarios would be. And that's a problem. And part of that problem was lodged in MMS and the way that that agency was structured. That was the agency in charge of providing permitting and making decisions in terms of where drilling could take place. But also in charge of enforcing the safety provisions. And as I indicated before, the IG report, the Inspector General's report that came out. Was scathing in terms of the problems there. And when Ken Salazar came in, he cleaned a lot of that up. But more needed to be done, and more needs to be done, which is part of the reason why he separated. out the permitting function from the functions that involve enforcing the various safety regulations. But I think on a whole bunch of fronts. You had a complacency when it came to what happens in the worst case scenario. I'll give you another example, because this is something that some of you have written about the question. Of how is it that oil companies kept on getting environmental waivers in getting their permits approved? Well, it turns out that the way the process works, first of all, There is a thorough environmental review as to whether a certain portion of the gulf should be leased or not. That's a thoroughgoing environmental evaluation. Then the overall lease is broken up into segments for individual leases. And again there's an environmental review that's done. But when it comes to a specific company with its exploration plan in that one.
particular area they're going to drill right here in this spot Congress. Mandated that only 30 days could be allocated before a yes or no answer was given. That was by law. So MMS's hands were tied. And as a consequence, what became the habit? Predating my administration, was you just automatically gave the environmental waiver. Because you couldn't complete an environmental study in 30 days. So what you've got is a whole bunch of aspects to how oversight. was exercised in deep water drilling that were very problematic. And that's why it's so important that this commission moves forward and examines, from soup to nuts. Why did this happen, how should this proceed in a safe, effective manner? What's required when it comes to worst case scenarios to prevent something like this from happening? I continue to believe that oil production is important, domestic oil production is important. But I also believe we can't do this stuff if we don't have. Confidence that we can prevent crises like this from happening again. And it's going to take some time for the experts to make those determinations. And as I said, in the meantime. I think it's appropriate that we keep in place the moratorium that I've already issued. Chip read. Question, thank you, MR. President. First of all, Elizabeth Birnbaum resigned today. Did she resign? Was she fired? Was she forced out? And if so, Why? And should other heads roll as we go on here?
Secondly, with regard to the Minerals Management Service, Secretary Salazar yesterday basically. Blamed the Bush administration for the cozy relationship there. And you seem to suggest that when you spoke in the Rose Garden a few weeks ago when you said, for too long. A decade or more most of those years, of course, the Bush administration there's been a cozy. relationship between the oil companies and the federal agency that permits them to drill. But you knew as soon as you came in, and Secretary Salazar did, about this cozy relationship. but you continued to give permits some of them under questionable circumstances. Is it fair to blame the Bush administration? Don't you deserve some of that? President Obama, well, let me just make the point that I made earlier. Which is Salazar came in and started cleaning house, but the culture had not fully changed in MMS. And absolutely I take responsibility for that. There wasn't sufficient urgency in terms of the pace of how those changes needed to take place. There's no evidence that some of the corrupt practices that had taken place earlier took place under the current administration's watch. but a culture in which oil companies were able to get what they wanted. Without sufficient oversight and regulation that was a real problem. Some of it was constraints of the law as I just mentioned, but we should have busted through those constraints. Now, with respect to MS. Birnbaum. I found out about her resignation today. Ken Salazar has been in testimony throughout the day, 
so I don't know the circumstances in which this occurred. I can tell you what I've said to Ken Salazar, which is that we have to make sure. If we are going forward with domestic oil production. that the federal agency charged with overseeing its safety and security is operating at the highest level. And I want people in there who are operating at the highest level and aren't making excuses when things break down, but are intent on fixing them. And I have confidence that Ken Salazar can do that. Question is his job safe? President Obama, yes. Juliana Goldman. Question, thank you, MR. President. We're learning today that the oil has been gushing as much as five times the initial estimates. What does that tell you and the American people about the extent to which BP can be trusted on any of the information that it's providing? Whether the events leading up to the spill, any of their information. President Obama, well, BP's interests are aligned with the public. Interest to the extent that they want to get this well capped. It's bad for their business. It's bad for their bottom line. They're going to be paying a lot of damages. And we'll be staying on them about that. So I think it's fair to say that they want this thing capped as badly. As anybody does and they want to minimize the damage as much as they can. I think it is a legitimate concern to question whether BP's interests in being fully forthcoming about the
extent of the damage is aligned with the public interest. I mean, their interests may be to minimize the damage. and to the extent that they have better information than anybody else, to not be fully forthcoming. So my attitude is we have to verify whatever it is they say about the damage. This is an area, by the way, where I do think our efforts fell short. And I'm not contradicting my prior point that people were working as hard as they could and doing the best that they could on this front. But I do believe that when the initial estimates came that there were it was 5,000 barrels spilling into the ocean per day. That was based on satellite imagery and satellite data that would give a rough calculation. At that point, BP already had a camera down there. but wasn't fully forthcoming in terms of what did those pictures look like. And when you set it up in time-lapse photography, experts could then make a more accurate determination. The administration pushed them to release it, but they should have pushed them sooner. I mean, I think that it took too long for us to stand up our flow tracking. group that has now made these more accurate ranges of calculation. Now, keep in mind that that didn't change what our response was. As I said from the start, we understood that this could be really bad. We are hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. And so there aren't steps that would have taken in terms of trying to cap the well, or skimming the surface, or the in-situ burns. Or preparing to make sure when this stuff hit shore that we could minimize the damage all those.
steps would have been the same even if we had information that this flow was coming out faster. And eventually, we would have gotten better information because, by law, the federal government. If it's going to be charging BP for the damage that it causes, is going to have to do the best possible assessment. But there was a lag of several weeks that I think shouldn't have happened. Helen Thomas Question, MR President, when are you going to get out of Afghanistan? Why are we continuing to kill and die there? What is the real excuse? And don't give us this Bushism. If we don't go there, they'll all come here. President Obama, well, Helen, the reason we originally went to Afghanistan was because that was the base. from which attacks were launched that killed 3,000 people I'm going to get to your question, I promise. But I just want to remind people we went there because the Taliban was harboring Al-Qaeda. which had launched an attack that killed 3,000 Americans. Al-Qaeda escaped capture and they set up in the border regions between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda has affiliates that not only provide them safe harbor. But increasingly are willing to conduct their own terrorist operations initially in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. but increasingly directed against Western targets and targets of our allies as well. So it is absolutely critical that we dismantle that network of extremists that are willing to attack us. And they are currently.